So what you might not know is that behind the scenes, corporations say very different things than what they say uh, in public. Or perhaps you do know that. That seems like it's relatively obvious. Take a look at this from Newsweek. Big restaurant chains are telling investors that a national minimum wage hike wouldn't be a big deal, even as their corporate lobbying groups in Washington fight plans for a $15 minimum wage. Quote, we share your view that a national discussion on wage issues for working Americans is needed, but the Raise, raise the Wage Act is the wrong bill at the wrong time for our nation's restaurants. The National Restaurant Association wrote in a letter to congressional leaders in February. Quote, the restaurant industry and our workforce will suffer from a fast-tracked wage increase and elimination of the tip credit. The following day, a top executive at Denny's, one of the nation's, one of the, excuse me, one of the association's members told investors that gradual increases in the minimum wage haven't been a problem for the company at all. In fact, California's law raising the minimum wage to $15 an hour by 2023 has actually been good for the diner chains business, according to Denny's chief financial officer, Robert Veristek. So it's helped them. Business is better after that. Um, let me give you some more. He goes on to say, quote, as they've increased their minimum wage kind of in a tempered pace over that time frame, if you look at that time frame from, from us, California has outperformed the system. Over that time, they had six consecutive years of positive guest traffic, not just positive sales, but positive guest traffic as the minimum wage was going up. In that article, they go on. The list is endless of various companies and heads of companies or top brass in these companies that say, like McDonald's. Somebody at the top of McDonald's said, quote, we'll be just fine. Cheesecake Factory. They were bragging. The like parent company was bragging about helping to defeat the $15 minimum wage. Then they admitted behind the scenes... Oh, it, it would be totally fine to pay that. It wouldn't affect us in a negative way at all. Um, top executives from Diamond Rock Hospitality, Kroger, HCA Healthcare, Hilton, Six Flags, they all downplayed the negative effects of a minimum wage increase and argued it might even be a positive. This is what they're saying behind the scenes. It might even be a positive, and here's why. They say it could, it could boost consumer spending. And then a lot their restaurants can get a windfall from that. So, do you, do you understand what's going on here? You have the National Restaurant Association, and a lot of these corporations lobby to keep that minimum wage low because they feel like it can pad the bottom line when they do that. But really, the top brass at a lot of these companies is like, if it raised the minimum wage, it wouldn't be the end of the world, and it might even help us. We don't know, but it might even help us. And it's the opposite of the trickle-down economy idea. It would be like a trickle-up economy. A bottom-up economy. Like, there's supply-side economics, and this would be, like, demand-side economics. So, in other words, if you give money to people who are in the middle or at the bottom of the economic ladder, they need that money. And when they get that money, they spend it pretty much immediately which has a ripple effect through the rest of the economy and helps. The economy's better off when you give money to the people who need money and then they can spend it immediately and, you know, you have this multiplier effect. And you, listen, it seems relatively straightforward, but this has not been the dominant philosophy in Washington for decades. You know, you have Art Laffer and the Milton Friedman approach and... Larry Kudlow, like these are the people who've really been crafting the economic direction of the country. And what they say is deregulate all the time and cut taxes for the wealthy all the time and cut taxes for corporations all the time and uh, see what happens. And usually you have the boom-bust cycle when, when that occurs. But listen, I don't know how much more evidence people need because it's overwhelming. So take Australia, for example. They have about a $15, the equivalent of a $15 minimum wage. They have the same unemployment rate as the U.S., so this idea that like, oh, if you raise the minimum wage, it's going to lead to mass unemployment because people will get laid off because businesses can't pay it. If that was the case, that would have happened in Australia. It didn't happen in Australia. In states that have raised their respective minimum wages in the U.S., these companies are like, we don't really see any down downsides of it. There are no real negative effects from it. 
You know, if there was going to be some sort of mass unemployment crisis, some of the states with the higher minimum wages would have it. And they don't. In fact, in some of those states, the unemployment rate is lower. It's lower. So I don't like what else do you need to hear? Apparently, if you just took the minimum wage from 1968 and adjusted it for inflation until today, it would be we'd have a minimum wage that's over $10 an hour. I think it'd be about $12 an hour. If the minimum wage kept up with the growth in Wall Street bonuses, it'd be $44 an hour today. If it kept up with productivity, it'd be about $23 an hour today. So if anything, wages are artificially low. And at the end of the day, the thing that's most important to me is this notion that if you work full time, you should make enough money to survive. And if you argue against that, you're, what you're doing is you're really arguing for wage slavery. You're telling somebody, I don't care if you work full time, you shouldn't make enough money to survive. So donate so much of your, of your, the majority of your waking hours, right? Give that to a job and that job shouldn't even reward you enough so that you can pay the bills and be comfortable enough to live. I really think that's an egregious position. And that's a position that's, uh, I mean, it's just, it's a clear indictment on the entire system that we've set up, that that's the reality. If you work a full-time job at minimum wage, you can't afford a one-bedroom apartment anywhere in the country. Anywhere. So how the, how can we pay people that terribly? It just, it's, it's horrendous. It's a terrible thing. And all the evidence I've seen is that when you raise the minimum wage, workers are better off and, um, it actually helps the economy. It helps the economy. Now, is there a line where you go maybe too high and that that actually would lead to unemployment? Sure, of course, but we're nowhere near that line. And even if you think um, that would happen, we can offset it in ways. So in other words, a lot of people argue that that's going to happen with the $15 minimum wage. That if you do $15, the reason the big companies are okay with it is because the small companies are going to go out of business and that's going to help the big companies. So in other words, if you make a small business pay $15 an hour, they can't afford it. And so they will go out of business or they'll have to fire a bunch of, of, their, of their workers. There's a way to address that without abandoning the $15 minimum wage. The way you address that is to have some sort of tax credit program or subsidy program where you pay those small businesses to keep their workforce on. So you effectively have the government step in and fund the difference in the wages that they would need in order to keep that worker on. So there's ways to address this stuff without just abandoning higher wages for workers. And it's just, it, they're, it's all total cop-out arguments, man. They make total cop-out bullshit arguments that aren't true. I mean, a lot of the Scandinavian countries, they don't even have minimum wages because you have near universal collective bargaining. And so the wages, the, the floor for the wages is way higher than whatever any minimum wage would nominally be. You have workers like, you know, making at the very minimum, like 30 or $40 an hour, the equivalent of 30 or $40 an hour in a lot of these Scandinavian countries. So... If they can afford that and it doesn't lead to economic dev devastation, of course we can afford 15 here. New Zealand just raised it to 20. Is there going to be some sort of apocalyptic scenario? No, it's just going to help the workers. So there you have it. Even the companies behind closed doors admit eh, this wouldn't be the worst thing in the world.